Huh. Okay, I guess I can let my breath out, huh? Been holding it for a long time because this little Ivy Bridge thing's been around the corner for a long time. Well, it's launch day. Monday, April 23rd, 2012. Ivy Bridge is finally here. I'm Elric Ferris, your host, here to bring you guys the full review of the new Core i7 3770K. Now, this is one of the brand new Ivy Bridge processors. This is a third generation Core CPU. Now, one of the biggest things about this entire release is actually something smaller. Kind of a little tricky there, huh? Now, these new CPUs have gone from the 32 nanometer process down to the 22 nanometer process, so they've all shrunk down, just like we've seen all the cards do from NVIDIA and from AMD. Now, what are some of the basics of the CPU? Well, the basics are this thing comes into market at running at 3.50 gigahertz. It has turbo boost up to 3.9, and it features all kinds of great stuff inside of the CPU that took engineers years to develop, and I'm gonna to try to bring it to you as a layman and hear this nice little short condensed package. It features four cores and eight threads. Now, what this means is that you have four cores in your CPU, but with hyper-threading enabled, you get virtualization, which looks like you're having eight CPU cores. It's pretty cool stuff. Some of the lower end ones won't have this on board. The next big thing is graphics related. This will be the new Intel HD 4000 embedded graphics. Now, previous generation CPUs, they actually didn't have any hardware chips actually on the CPU to provide you the graphics. It was more like virtual. Now with the new HD 4000, we see hardware implemented onto the CPU. This has actually resulted in really high quality graphics onto the CPU. Now you guys know that AMD, they've had their APU out for quite a while, but the big dragging thing about the APU to me is its lack of balls as far as performance goes. Now AMD has a pretty good solution as far as the graphics go on their APU, but as far as the CPU performance goes, it's very lagging. It's like barely better than an Atom, which to me is just entry level. What Intel has done is they've gone and actually put a big set of balls onto the CPU and then giving you your graphics on top of it as well. Some of the really big questions that everybody's asking is though, what's the difference between Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge and the performance? Well, we're gonna jump in and show you guys a bunch of different benchmarks. Now, we've used a 580, which is PCI 2.0 for you guys who want to upgrade and we've showed how that runs. And we've also used a GTX 680, which is PCI 3.0. So you guys can see the differences there because we know not everybody's gonna just jump out and upgrade everything they have right now. It just costs too much money. So with that being said, let's jump in right now and let's take a look at some of the different performance evaluations that we've seen here at motherboards.org. The test station that we're gonna be using today features Intel's D77GA-70K motherboard. Obviously, it features the new Intel i7-3770K. We're also using 16 gigabytes of Kingston's latest DDR3 dual channel memory. As far as cooling goes, we're using Cooler Master's latest 812 cooler. If you guys missed the unboxing, you guys can see that here at motherboards.org. As far as optical goes, we're just using a standard ROM made by Samsung. Now, it gets interesting as far as our storage goes. We're using a Patriot. This is their Pyro SE 128 gigabyte drive as our basic boot and storage drive. And then we also have an additional one terabyte Western digital black drive for storage. All the tests that you see have been run three times and then balanced out for accuracy. Now let's jump in and actually see the testing.
That's really how I feel. It's been one hell of a long week and a lot of testing to bring this review to you folks. Now, you guys can see we've tried to cover every single base that there is. We've covered comparison between Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. We've compared heat between Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge, video between Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge, internal graphics between Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge, and just straight up GTX scores with a 580 just to see how they're going. So we've really tried to give you guys the whole kit and caboodle with this review. Now with that, do I feel that anybody needs to go out and basically sell their old Sandy Bridge system to upgrade to Ivy Bridge? I don't really feel that you need to do that. From what we've seen, the CPU, as far as performance values, go anywhere between 12 and 21% depending on the application. So there is an improvement there. And also with the HD 4000 graphics, you guys can see a lot of improvements there as well. Now the HD 4000 graphics, I just want to mention you guys, a lot of people are hardcore gamers. You're going to schmirk at this and go, Pfft, I wouldn't even look at that. But I got to say this, if you're somebody out there who just wants to have a solid HTPC, the graphics that are on board are really, really good. They do play all the latest games. They're great for watching movies. They have all the latest codecs and everything embedded in it. You can watch all your Blu-rays and all that stuff. And for that type of user, this is going to be a really good solution. Gone are the days where you're going to have to go out and actually buy a video card. I think that's a solid win-win. I mean, Intel with this release, they did not go out and reinvent the wheel. What they did is they made a better tire that grips the road better. That's what it really is. So at the end of the day, if you're looking to go out and buy something new, I would definitely jump into Ivy Bridge. Why not? You get all kinds of new features. You guys can see the processor runs at about 11 watts less under total power. That's good. It runs cooler. It's around the same price. So why even go backwards? And with the new HD 4000 graphics embedded it, I just feel overall for the desktop environment, it's definitely another leap forward for the people over at Intel. Thanks for watching. For the most up-to-date pricing in Ivy Bridge, check out the links in the description. Don't quote me on pricing because this stuff changes every day.